Hi, and welcome to part two of um, the lecture, this introductory lecture on housing and home for place, memory, and meaning. So what I'm going to be covering in this section is um, looking at, at house and housing as a concept, which is very different to how we uh, characterize home. So let's, um, let's see um, how we can begin to develop our understanding of, of um, a house and housing. Well, one of the first things that we could perhaps note is that um, representations of housing and home together represented at the same time seem to be sort of omnipresent in society. So in a way to claim that there is this distinction is a bit of a red herring. Um, actually, these two concepts are used interchangeably often. But for, from our purposes, what we want to do is to, is to kind of look behind the curtain of that somewhat and to begin to look at those definitions that um, um, emerge in uh, um, existing scholarship. So for example, um, a house is often much more quantitatively expressed. Um, we talk about a demarcation of space. We talk about square footage. We talk about acreage. We talk about you know um, something that's much more tangible, much more physical, has physical characteristics. So Lawrence's definition here is very helpful. A house is a physical unit that defines um, a, a delimited space for members of a household. It provides shelter and protection for domestic activities. So in a way, Lawrence is saying that a house is quite a functional entity. It's something which serves an express purpose for everyday life. So we can take as our basic starting point that housing, a house, is more spatially, objectively, i.e. value-free, and quantitatively defined, whereas home is um, more subjectively and qualitatively defined. Um, Mallet re-emphasizes those points by talking about these definitions of boundaries. Um, and as land price is becoming increasingly expensive, that demarcation of space is an increasingly important aspect of the way, the way that we live. I've uploaded two tracks for you to play back in your own time. So when you're playing this lecture back, you know, do click on those links and um, they will bring you to um, a track by Madness, a ska band from the 1980s who had a track called Our House. Um, and um, it's really, really jolly. Um, but I think it's really helpful for us to think about, well, um, if they were geographers, would they not want to use the word home as well somewhere along the line? <laughs> and also to think about the Beatles track, um, she's leaving home, but she's also leaving a physical entity. When we think about housing and we think about houses, as we can see here, they're expressed um, quantitatively often. So when we look at academic literature on things like, and including geography, but also in, um, in economics, in social policy, in sociology, we see that numbers are very often used. Um, I think it's also really helpful to think of um, housing as defined in architecture. The, first, the Swiss French architect Le Corbusier defined a house as a machine for living. Um, and interestingly, um, the architects who designed Park Hill Flats are beloved um, uh, series of flats in, in Sheffield took inspiration directly from Le Corbusier and that development that you see here is a development called the Unité d'Habitation in Marseille. Le Corbusier was very much in favour of housing as something which is which is functional and actually did advocate people stripping away all those individual characteristics that we would see um, home as being placed. In contrast Eileen Gray, who was a pioneering architect in the 1920s, who um, reportedly built the world's first modernist dwelling, um, which was uh, a, a beautiful property located in, in um, the, um, the south of France, in a village called Rockbrun Cap Martin, taking inspiration from Le Corbusier, but she really challenged his view of Housing. And I think this quote from Eileen Gray shows you this importance of this, this kind of blurring of um, conceptual boundaries between space and place. Her, her house was called E1027, and there's a really intriguing story as 
to why she decided to call it E1027. And you might want to look that up. Um, it's a kind of quite a um, captivating tale. But Arlene Gray said, a house is not a machine for living. It is the soul of a man. Um, it is not a machine to live in. It is the shell of man, his extension, his release, his spiritual emanation. It is a living organism in which each of the inhabitants could find total independence and an atmosphere of solitude and concentration. So she was challenging Le Corbusier. The house itself has an amazing history. Um, and at some point I might well pick this, this up as a case study during the course of the module. Meanwhile, I'm going to show you a clip of a film that was made from an album written um, to celebrate the work of Eileen Gray. And it just kind of gives you that sort of that, that contrast between Le Corbusier's quite um, definitive sense of um, a house as a machine for living, but all the kind of the different attributes and the very sort of personal nature of this, the, the story that um, supports the, um, the building of E1027. So um, this was a film that we made that was shown at, um, uh, it was premiered at um, an architecture conference in Turin in um, 2018. Oh, and I hope you like it. Suburbs and musicians materialize in the forms of the blaze of avenue of the trees. Glimpse through iron rings, brought forth deep of fear, and have you strolling on and on to the game. We were children in the blue of Christmas, wandering the casual Sunday, sailing on the abstract line. From church and fountain, diamonds of life flowering in our eyes as we share our precious heart. Long in the seeking, cheap and acclaimed in the corner of a cafe in the fall of the day. No more hearts, love and work and pain. Oh, my heart is love and work and pain. Oh, my heart, the corners of the day.
So the, the story of Aline Gray is something that we will be coming back to. Um, but one of the things that I will say is that, you know, the, the story of the kind of contrasting approaches to both housing and home adopted by Luca Bouzier and Aline Gray make for a fascinating story. And it's one that I'll share with you in a bit more detail as the module progresses. Um, one of the quotes that Arlene Gray said was that to create one must question everything um, and um, I think that's absolutely right if we're to create new knowledge if we're to build on existing knowledge both in this module in place memory meaning and indeed elsewhere then we do need to be questioning everything never taking anything at face value so um, with that kind of healthy critical um, outlook in mind I really look forward very much to the weeks ahead of um, exploring these really important issues with you. So until next time, um, have a really good week or so everyone and look forward to seeing you in the seminar. Bye for now.